Salvete discipuli. In this tutorial video, we will begin reading together the story Matrona Ephesia, the Lady of Ephesus. Let's just say this is going to be the best finding love in a graveyard story you are going to read in Latin this year. Matrona quaedam Ephesi, tam notai erat pudicitiae ut, vecinarum quoque gentium feminas ad spectaculum sui evocaret. There was. Now, there's going to be more than one possible way to translate this, okay? So I'm starting with this verb erat. I'm saying there was. What there was was a matrona quaedam, a certain lady, okay? Quaedam is an adjective that means like a certain something. You basically take the relative pronouns and you put dom at the end. So the masculine would be quis dom, okay? Quaedam being the feminine, the, no the nominative singular feminine form. There was a certain lady of Ephesus, Ephesi. This is the genitive singular. Now, I'm adding in parentheses who was, okay? Because basically, one way to render this is you could just say a certain lady of Ephesus was. Uh, and so just basically this makes for a little more natural uh, English. There was a certain lady who was. Now, what she was... Tom notai pudicitiae, of such famous chastity. Okay, so Tom here is rendered as such, okay, and um, you could be translated as so, so much, or here such. And then notai goes with pudicitiae, these are genitive singulars. So she was of such famous chastity chastity. Now, the English word chaste, this is the adjective, um, it's pronounced exactly like the verb past tense of to chaste, but this means what chastity is. Now, some people wrongly assume that chastity means like that she's, she's not having any sexual relations. That's not what it means. She's married, okay, we're going to learn. She's married, and chastity is being faithful within your station in life, okay? So traditional societies understood that a person would not be having any sexual relations until they were married, okay? So in such a traditional society, for, a, for an unmarried person, um, sexual abstinence was considered appropriate, and that would be the definition of chastity for an unmarried person. The definition of chastity for a married person would be fidelity to her married partner, okay? So, so the, she was of such famous chastity that, now ut can mean in order that, when you have a word like tam or the adjective tantus in any of its forms in the clause prior to the word ut, okay, this generates what's called a result clause. Now, I actually like to add in the words as a result. Kind of, It kind of helps to make it a little more clear. So she was of such famous chastity that as a result, here's what she was doing. Evocaret. She was calling out. The direct object is feminas. Okay, so she was calling out the women. Which women? Okay, vecinarum gentium are genitive plurals. Okay, quoque, of course, means also. So these words go together. She was calling out the women of neighboring peoples also to do what? Ad spectaculum sui, literally to the sight of her, okay? So a spectaculum, you've already learned, means like a show, okay? So here, it's just like to get a look at her, okay? To look, so we could make it even to a verbal clause, okay? So the, the idea here is, okay, 
that she's like famous. Everybody knows, oh, you know, that that lady of Ephesus, she is so chaste. It's just amazing. She's like, really? I, I heard about her. Let's let's go to Ephesus and take a look. So they go to Ephesus. Okay. Now the reason they're going to Ephesus is because the you know word of her chastity has spread around. So in that sense, she was of such famous chastity that she was calling out the women. Okay. So the other women are like, you know, look, you know, some people try to be chaste, but we've heard this woman's the most chaste of all. So they actually went and they looked, they go, hey, look, there she is in the market. Oh, you know, I can tell just from looking at her how chaste she is. This is just amazing. So now th this is obviously a very um, unusual first sentence for a story. Okay, so the characterization that this is setting up for us is that she is indeed so chaste um, that she's like she's beyond chaste. Okay, and this is going to explain this is going to explain what happens next. Okay, next sentence. Haik ergo cum virum extulisset non contenta vulgari more funus passis prosequi crinibus aut nudatum pectus in conspectu frequentiae plangere. Guess what? This woman, therefore, okay, so haik is just the hik haik hok form. It means this. This is the nominative singular feminine form. So it's short for this woman, ergo, therefore, cum virum ex tu licet. When she brought out, virum is going to be the direct object of ex tu licet. When she brought out, her man understood her husband. Now, this idiom, okay, to bring out the man, what this means is he's dead, okay, he died. So basically, this story has just already turned on a dime in the second sentence. The, the first sentence was all about how she is the most chaste person on the planet, and now her husband just died, okay? So the idea is they had something like a wake in the house, okay? This is, again, done in traditional societies. They had a wake in the house, and now it's time to take him to the cemetery. And that's the idiom then, when she brought out her man, meaning brought him out of the house after the wake, and now it's time to go to the cemetery, okay? So, so she remember, she's so chaste that therefore, when she brought out her man, non contenta, okay, not content, this is describing her, this is nominative singular feminine, so not content, now she's not content to do two things. And these are the infinitives that express the actions that she is not content to do. Now, what this is going to be is there are certain societal norms, okay? So there's certain things that are expected of a widow when her husband has just died. She's gonna do those things, but she's not content just to do those things. She's going to do something in addition to what society expects of her, okay? So, you know, in some societies, it's, for instance, expected that the woman would wear black for at least 40 days, things like that. Um, here, here's the first thing she's not content to do. Now, she's again, she is doing these things, but she's not content to just do these things. So, not content prosequi, okay? Prosequi is the infinitive of this deponent verb. Not content to follow funus, the funeral. Now, the funeral is going to be, they're going to be carrying the body like on some type of, of a cot, okay? So the, the pallbearers are gonna be carrying, the body's gonna be on this cot, and they're gonna be like, uh, they're gonna be walking their way toward the cemetery, which is probably somewhere just outside town, okay? Now, here's vulgari more, okay? By common custom, okay? So vulgari more, uh, these are ablatives, okay? So by common custom, here's what's expected of her that she would follow the funeral by common custom, passis crinibus, that she would follow the funeral with disheveled hair. Okay, so passis means disheveled, crinibus means hair. Those are both 
ablative plurals, okay? So she's not content, you may want to ask, to just follow the funeral by common custom with disheveled hair or out plangere. Plangere means to mourn, okay? And now out means or, so or to mourn. And then the rest of this is going to describe further what her society expects of her to be doing on the way to the funeral. Nudatum pectus, with bare chest. Okay, so this might seem unusual to us, you know, like, like the widow is supposed to basically like not be wearing a top as she's walking with disheveled hair uh, following the funeral on the way to the cemetery. But you know what? Societies have different customs. So, she, so again, she is doing this. Okay, she's, she's doing this, but she's not content to just do this. Okay, so with bare chest. Now, these are accusatives, nudatum pectus. Pectus is a neuter um, noun, even though it's got the U.S. ending. It is a neuter third declension. Okay, so when you've got accusative, it means like, like with respect to that like feature. Okay, so I'm rendering it like with bare chest. But really, you could even say she's not content to mourn like bare at the chest, something like that. In conspectu frequentiae, in the sight of the crowd, okay? So conspect to, that is an ablative singular ending of a fourth declension noun, frequentiae genitive singular of a first declension noun, in conspect to frequentiae, in the sight of the crowd. Now, what this means is, you know, the crowd actually are, they're kind of judgmental and they, they always are kind of watching to make sure that a widow is doing what a widow is supposed to do. So she's she's like doing these things um, and it is in conspectu frequentiae. But now we're about to learn she's not content to just do those things. She's going to do something else that is not expected of a widow. In conditorium etiam prosecuta est defunctum. Here's what she did that's not expected. Even followed. Etiam means even. Now prosecuta est is the deponent perfect tense. Okay, so a deponent verb uh, ends with an O. So this would be prosequor, but here using this as an example, we know it's deponent because it ends in an O-R. And the perfect tense is formed. You take the past participle and then you add the forms of um, the verb to be in the present tense. Together, that forms the perfect tense. Now, of an active verb, this would have been passive. Okay, so like misus est would mean he was sent. But here, conatus est means he tried. Now, to make this feminine, you just change the us to an a as we have here. So conata est, she tried. Okay, so etiam prosecuta est, she understood, even followed, the direct object is defunctum, from which we get the English word defunct, okay? She even followed the dead one in conditorium, into the tomb, okay? Now, what's supposed to happen is they're going to put the body in the tomb, Okay, and we're going to learn it's like, it's kind of like a little house of sorts, like a crypt, and you, you like walk down some stairs as you go inside it, and that's where the body would be laid, okay? Um, she's expected to watch them put the body in the tomb, then she's expected to go home. She's expected to have a period of mourning, and if she wants to, there is nothing wrong in a traditional society for her to get married again, okay, and move on with her life, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Her society does not look down on a widow deciding to once again find love and have companionship and a new life. What they're not supposed to do is follow the dead one into the tomb. But remember, she's the most chaste woman anyone's ever known. She was not content to just do the normal things, so she has done this as well. Corpus custodire ac flere totis noctibus diebusque coipit. 
Okay, we run straight to the end for the verb. She began. Okay, now koipid is going to take infinitives to complete its action. The infinitives are custodire and flere. Okay, so first she began corpus custodire to guard the body. And, ak is another way to say and, and flere to weep. Okay, flere to weep. And noctis noctibus diebusque are ablatives of time that are expressing the time frame in which she is guarding the body and weeping, namely through whole nights and days. Okay, so she's not leaving the tomb at all. She's staying there. She's not going to leave. Um, we're going to learn that it is, in fact, her intention to die of starvation in the tomb with her dead husband. And that's kind of what she understands to be how she is going to continue to be chased even uh, in widowhood.